All right. So welcome everyone once again. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar this evening. Um, we have a loaded uh, webinar today. We have two presentations. Firstly, by our uh, colleague Dimitra from the Climate Alliance, and then we will have, um, as as you, uh, some of you may already know, we will have some of our uh, focus group teachers, Anna Maria, Magda, and Rafael, to present uh, one of our uh, kits uh, for the for the short films go green program. Um, I, I don't want to take too much of your time uh, since, as I said, we have two presentations this evening, so I will pass the floor to Dimitra to to for her uh, presentation. Thank you, Dimitra, and, and go ahead. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to, to the webinar. I'm going to share my screen and then start immediately with the presentation. OK, let me know if you can see it well in the presenter's mode. Yep, this, we can see it. It's all good. OK, perfect. So today we're going to basically talk about uh, how uh, we can uh, embrace eco-conscious attitudes in uh, film education. Uh, and I'm going to present you the eco charter that you can find available on the European Film Factory uh, platform. And uh, this eco charter was created in collaboration uh, between uh, the European Field Factory uh, team and uh, Climate Alliance, so the organization I represent. Uh, so basically what we will talk about in the next uh, 20 minutes, and please uh, keep your questions for the for the end of the presentation and uh, send them in the chat uh, if you are using that, and I can just uh, look into them right after the presentation. So what we will talk about is basically, I will tell you a bit about what Climate Alliance is, uh, then the environmental impact uh, of uh, our lives and what the EU is currently doing uh, in order to minimize the impact uh, on the environment of uh, the way we live in. And uh, finally, I will uh, give you a few um, tips that you can also find in the Echo Charter that is available on the, on the website, as already mentioned. So I will not go into all of them, but I will basically focus on digital attitudes and event management. So Climate Alliance, we were very excited to be approached by the European Field Factory for creating this Echo Charter because it's not exactly our uh, uh, normal task. Uh, what we normally do is that um, we work closely with uh, cities. Uh, so Climate Alliance basically is a network of uh, cities around Europe. And uh, we try in collaboration with them to support them with uh, concrete actions and with recommendations and uh, bilateral uh, discussions into uh, the climate action plans they're implementing in their uh, local uh, context. Uh, and at the same time, uh, Climate Alliance exists for over 30 years and it started as a um, uh, as a collaboration between uh, indigenous people on the Amazon basin and uh, German cities. So basically around 30 years ago when the discussion about climate was still uh, at the early stage, uh, many German cities formed an alliance and uh, they thought that indigenous people are the local uh, communities that uh, live closer to the environment. And they thought that by uh, getting in contact with them and collaborating with them, they came together uh, kind of uh, balance out the impact that uh, uh, more developing uh, countries are, uh, are having on the environment, while at the same time taking into account the people that are closer to nature as the indigenous people on the Amazon basin. So that's basically the, the story of the organization. Uh, the, uh, the network is uh, quite big. There's around 2,000 uh, cities that are um, members of the organization. So maybe it's the city you're living in as well uh, from uh, 25 European countries. So let's say we work with around 90 million people. That's like 
the end uh, um, target. And uh, what I, they, the cities that are joining the network, what is basically, let's say, what they commit to by becoming members uh, are to basically reduce the greenhouse gas emissions they produce up to 95% by two, uh, 2050 uh, compared to the 1990 levels. And at the same time, they also commit to climate justice and uh, having a compre comprehensive climate action uh, in accordance to the Climate Alliance principles. So they sign an agreement uh, that uh, they have to uh, implement actions in accordance with those principles. And then uh, together with them, we help them achieve this, uh, these goals. So that's basically the organization where I'm coming from. And uh, now I will start uh, talking about uh, the main topic of the discussion, uh, which is how basically we can uh, try to implement in our lives more uh, eco-conscious uh, decisions. And why do we need to do that? Because uh, uh, we are affecting the environment we're living in with the choices we're making. And we can see this by um, the global greenhouse emissions that uh, are, uh, are produced every year. And uh, I have put here some general um, statistics for your information to understand how much uh, each industry impacts uh, the greenhouse uh, emissions. So on the left side, you can see basically the greenhouse gas emissions uh, from the EU. These are the stats of 2019 and 70-70% uh, comes from energy. And this can be also energy related to their digital attitudes. Then there is a 10% from agriculture and 9% uh, around 9% from industrial processes. And on the global scale, on the right side of the slide, it's uh, a bit more detail when we talk about energy, what we mean uh, by that. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, the, the vast majority of, uh, of the sector that um, produces the most global greenhouse gas emissions come from uh, energy use in industry. Uh, and again, I will link uh, later on with uh, how this relates to digital attitudes. And, um, and to the discussion we're having, then transportation and uh, energy using buildings. So this is basically, let's say, a bit the, the framework. Um, then uh, I, let's go a bit more into details about uh, technology. So basically uh, from the um, from the whole uh, greenhouse gas emissions, the carbon footprint that is produced uh, by technology accounts to between two to three uh, percent. So the tech industry basically uh, consume massive amounts of energy to power data centers, uh, servers and other IT infrastructure. Uh, for example, uh, around 45% of greenhouse gas emissions in the global ICT sector uh, are used for, yeah, for data centers, etc. Uh, so this leads to a high carbon footprint, as much uh, of the energy comes from fossil fuels, uh, which contributes basically to climate change. Then uh, another uh, sector where the impact of technology is um, is very uh, present is the electronic waste we are producing uh, every year. So as uh, as you probably are aware, uh, we are all using electronic devices that uh, the way they are uh, produced uh, nowadays, they have a certain expiration date and this results to a massive uh, electronic waste annually. Uh, so, just to give you a bit of idea on that, there are around uh, 350 million tons of uh, uh, electronic waste that are produced every year. And this is a huge issue because only around 70% are being uh, recycled properly. And the rest uh, uh, is uh, ending up in... Uh, uh, Yes, they, they are not basically uh, recycled properly, so they end up in, in dumps. I think it's called English, I forgot the English word. Uh, and then uh, even if they are recycled, still the process uh, for disposal 
is uh, quite uh, hazardous for the environment because uh, there is a lot of um, toxics that are released and uh, they create the air pollution. Then uh, manufacturing, so the production of the electronic devices uh, has a significant impact. And the reason is that uh, in this, in the process of manufacturing, there are areas such as the collection of raw materials, uh, the transportation, uh, the production, the assembly and disposal, that they all have a high carbon uh, footprint. And uh, during the production and assembly of electronic devices specifically, uh, there are many a uh, use of uh, chemicals that are that uh, are involved in the process that can result in uh, very high air pollution and uh, water pollution as well. And finally, uh, mining. So the mining uh, uh, process is obvious when you talk about uh, uh, technology. So we use a lot of uh, mining, uh, a lot of material uh, in order to produce all the devices and all the electronic uh, appliances that we are using every day. And this is a ne negative environmental impact, not only because of pollution and um, and emissions, but also uh, because of loss of biodiversity. Uh, that is uh, one of the like a major concern, uh, except from, of course, also that in the areas where mining takes place, uh, there is a lot of health hazards for the communities where they live uh, in these areas. So this is basically in a very quick way the impact we have uh, through the technology we're using in the environment. And I wanted to show to you now, I'm not sure if it's going to play, otherwise I'll stop presenting and uh, show uh, open on uh, the browser, what the EU is trying to do uh, for uh, taking action um, in order to balance basically and uh, uh, move towards sustainability. If the sound doesn't play, just let me know and, and uh, I can try to fix it. Dimitri, there is actually no sound. Maybe when you share, there's a toggle switch that says include computer sound. So if, if you can do that, I think we can hear there. So uh, where can I find that? You have to stop sharing and reshare your, your PowerPoint. Okay. But this time, when you click the share button at the top right, you will see include computer sound. Oh, toggle yes, it on. Yes, yes. Oh, the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I see it. Okay, perfect. Okay. And voila. Yep, all good now. Climate action is at the heart of current EU concerns. But that's not new. European countries started acting in the 70s. To reduce pollution, improve natural and urban environments, and promote awareness of ecological problems, the European Commission introduced the first Environmental Action Programme. In 1987, the single European Act made protecting health, natural resources and the environment an EU goal. Next came the European Environment Agency in 1990, it informs people about and helps monitor environmental action in the EU. Environmental issues became a fully integrated EU policy area with the Maastricht Treaty in 1993. It also strengthened the European Parliament's role in developing environment policy. But this was not enough to tackle climate change. In 1999, the Amsterdam Treaty made sustainable development a key objective. It became obligatory to integrate environmental protection into all EU policies, like agriculture, transport or regional policy. So far, so good. But the rollout of EU environment policies was uneven across countries. So in 2001, Parliament adopted minimum standards for environmental inspections punishing serious offences like illegal emissions, wildlife trade or the dumping of waste. And in 2015, the Paris Agreement was signed and backed by the European Parliament. It aims to keep the rising global temperatures well below 2 degrees centigrade to try and limit the effects of climate change. Four years later, the European Parliament took an historic stand. And the resolution is adopted. 
l'Europe est le premier continent de ce monde à déclarer l'état d'urgence environnementale et climatique. The Commission responded, presenting the Green Deal, an ambitious roadmap to a climate neutral Europe. In 2020, the EU proposed a European climate law, setting in stone the goal to reduce greenhouse gases 55% by 2030. And the European climate law is indeed the cornerstone of the European Green Deal, as it enshrines into legislation the Union's objective to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 at the latest. 2021 to 2030. The eighth environmental action program will focus on accelerating the transition to climate neutrality, to clean and efficient energies, and to a circular economy. So that's basically, yeah, that's basically in a nutshell what uh, the EU has put now in place. Uh, in order to uh, tackle the, the issues of uh, climate change and to move towards a more sustainable uh, future. Uh, so the European Green Deal is uh, the biggest, uh, let's say, commitment uh, that uh, a continent has ever taken. And uh, this has been um, evolving in the last years with additional um, legislatives, legislatives uh, and uh, also like climate plans from uh, national countries. So we see that there is a, a positive uh, movement and um, there are actions that are being taken uh, forward. But of course, uh, there is also things that we can do in our everyday life to contribute. And this is why we're talking today about uh, how we can use uh, the European Fuel Factory platform in a um, conscious way and what we can do in general to affect uh, the digital attitudes we have. So I have also put here a slide about uh, the ecological fruit footprint that uh, each one of us uh, produces on Earth. And if you are curious, you can go to the website uh, footprintcalculator.org and you can see your own ecological footprint. And uh, it's an interesting website because uh, at the end it also gives you it gives you an estimation of uh, a day that uh, basically based on the lifestyle you are uh, you have after you answer the questions. Uh, when is uh, would be uh, the day that uh, all the resources on Earth would be would have finished if everyone was living the same way as you that would take them this test and uh, this website also at the end gives some solutions and some recommendations of, on improvements so it's quite uh, interactive and interesting to to use uh, then uh, I will go then after this slide I'll just go directly on into uh, the environmental charter uh, and pinpoint some like tips that you can find there and that uh, are quite uh, maybe easy to implement uh, when you use the European Field Factory platform, but also they can also be reflected not only in the use of the European Field Factory, but in general uh, on your online uh, attitude. So for instance, about uh, the first thing that we can do since we're talking about digital attitude is uh, to think of how we are watching films. Uh, when you're using the platform in the classroom, the first thing that you can uh, easily implement is to watch the film offline. So if you are using a film through the platform, you can easily download it and save it in your computer and you don't have to uh, stream it online because when you stream it online, uh, there is a high uh, environmental impact and energy consumption uh, through that. Then the same can be done through music uh, and other films that you may frequently use in the class. So you can always save them on your laptop and uh, apply the same uh, logic uh, each time. Uh, then uh, Wi-Fi wi connection is recommended for accessing uh, the platform as well as uh, adopting the screen resolution. So basically, if you reduce the resolution of your uh, screen, that will uh, save energy and uh, eventually it will be the same result. Uh, so this is kind of tips that you can also use um, 
uh, give to your to your students since in the European Film Factory uh, I know that you can also share the, the your students also have uh, access to the platform. Then uh, the next uh, uh, tips are related in, in general uh, digital attitudes. So the first one relates to the devices we're using. So as I mentioned already earlier, the devices we're using uh, are we we tend to change them very often because of the lifespan they have. Uh, so what we recommend is basically. Uh, that you choose uh, devices if it's on uh, obviously it's, it's on your hand devices that uh, have extens extensive lifespan and they are energy efficient. So nowadays, when you are uh, choosing a device and return device, there are certifications about how energy efficient they are. So this is something that you can pay attention to. And there's a lot of options of uh, refurbished devices that you can uh, uh, explore. And you can also apply this to your old devices by making sure that uh, they are disposed properly or that uh, they are given to someone else if they, if they are still working, that you can give them to someone else. In many different cities, there is um, uh, groups and there is uh, local associations that uh, uh, handle this kind of uh, of requests. So this is something you can explore if it's available in your community. Then there is a lot of uh, green search en engines such as uh, Ecosia, uh, Jexi, Lilos and Hero. So these are basically search engines like uh, Google or uh, like uh, uh, Firefox that are the most known, let's say, that uh, try to reduce the environmental impact by uh, different ways. So, for instance, by where they are storing the data, uh, by making sure that uh, uh, they are recycling uh, material, by making sure, for example, uh, Ocean Hero, they are uh, involved in, they are collaborating with an uh, organization that uh, is cleaning uh, the oceans. Depending on the amount of uh, users they have, they can contribute more to this kind of work. So they are doing this kind of like, um, they have this kind of approach in order to balance uh, the impact they have by uh, being uh, an online platform, an online service. Then uh, book manufacturing. So basically it is uh, an easy way to not have to uh, serve on the web. Uh, if you bookmark the, um, the, the the websites that you are using more frequently. So by doing that, you save some uh, energy that to, to not have to go to an, uh, an active search. Uh, same with the, as the search engines, there are also eco-conscious mail and uh, website providers that you can consider, such as, such as uh, Posteo, Proton Mail. And uh, some very uh, some very easy tip that we sometimes tend to forget is to make sure that uh, we clean our mail addresses. We don't uh, uh, overload servers with uh, unnecessary content, and we install ad blockers on our uh, computers. Which is, this is something as well that, except from advertisements being annoying, they are also having an environmental impact as well. Then the last thing that I want to, to share with you uh, is regarding to uh, the um, organization of events. So, for example, uh, screenings of uh, films in your classrooms. There are some things that you can uh, take into account when you, when you are designing your events in order to basically minimize the impact they have. Uh, for example, you can try to go for uh, an event without paper and no single use products that are normally the easy solution. So nowadays in most of the countries, there is uh, alternative uh, either recycled material that you can use or also um, a paper uh, made of paper recycled products that you can also consider in case you don't want to, you, it's not possible for you to go for uh, no single use products then because those are easier to recycle obviously then uh, it's it's good to pay attention to the location as well as the transportation of the participants so talking about the location this means 
uh, whether you do it online or whether you do it offline, uh, and how far have the participants to transport. You can also encourage them to use um, uh, public transportation uh, and uh, give them some kind of guidelines in order to reach the location of the event that you're organizing. And finally, uh, something to consider is uh, catering. So it is uh, it, it will be much uh, more ecological uh, choice if you go for local and uh, seasonal and vegetarian options. Uh, and um, the reasons basically are, are many, of course, transportation of products uh, as well as uh, Seasonal means that we are not producing, uh, um, we're not consuming products that are produced out of season because that will require a lot of water, a lot of, uh, uh, yes, the resources uh, used uh, for these purposes. And a funny fact, uh, not really funny, but an interesting fact to know is that uh, uh, around one third of the Earth's habitable land uh, is used for animal farming, which is very high number, uh, and uh, most of it actually is uh, focused on uh, uh, is, is used for uh, actually livestock and uh, particularly beef. So by proposing vegetarian options for the events, we have a small uh, contribution to basically reducing this uh, this impact of the livestock. That's it. I tried to speak very fast. I'm not sure if I, I'm on time. Uh, so all these tips and much more actually in more details you can find in the Con Conscious Charter that is uh, online on the website of the European Hill Factory after you have logged in, I believe. And uh, that's it from my side. I'll pass the floor to the next presenter. And if you have any questions, let me know. And if you need to know anything additionally, here's my email address. And thank you. I think the slides will be shared probably after the event. Um, thank you, Dimitra. It's it's great to hear. Uh, and it's it's quite relevant actually in the sense that we uh, you know we don't really think about our uh, digital habits when it comes to environment we a lot of people might really care about environment but you know it's it's not something we often think in that context our digital habits or things we do online or how it impacts the environment so it's actually a good good point in that sense especially that little statistic on the, one of your slides about 70 80 percent of the the um, internet consumption actually rooted is is streaming which which does have a very big impact in terms of energy consumption and indirectly well directly actually even uh, to to environments so that's, mm. that's really good and being in being in a project on well streaming uh films it's 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 a direct link to us as well and um i'm looking at the chat i don't see anything i i to me it was quite clear and then the 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 relevance and the the information that you share, but maybe people are also in the on the same page. And if there are any questions, please, uh, colleagues on the call, please, please feel free to to write it on the chat. And otherwise, I will move on. And you were perfectly on time, by the way. It's exactly <laughs> one hour, half an hour. Um, so thank you once again, and thank you for coming to to give us this presentation. And if no questions, I will move on to my next set of colleagues to to give their presentation on the the kit the floor is yours uh rafael magda and and anna maria they'll share your slides very quickly i didn't forget <laughs> so again it's my privilege and honor to start presenting our um, presentation um about short films go green um, okay, we can go to the first slide, I think. So, uh, first of all, just like Dmitra, I want to thank you that you are here with us and you decided to spend an hour and to listen what we want to say about um, our kids. And uh, 
today we want to talk about short films, but before we're going to do that, I'm always um, having impression or uh, or maybe to hope that there is someone new um, among us. So I just want to uh, tell you briefly what European Film Factory is. Uh, it's a platform which you can find, of course, online. And uh, in there you can find a lot of movies from all uh, over Europe. Those movies were selected by specialists. And to um, each of that movie, the teachers uh, prepared um, educational kits. And in that document, you can find a lot of information about uh, directing, about biography of a director, uh, circumstances uh, among making movies, and of course the movie language. And what's uh, important for us teachers uh, is um, um, educational, uh, uh, not educational kits, but activities. And those activities, you can use it the way you found in uh, in the kit, or you can use it as an inspiration and you can just use it also a part of it. It's always depends on you. So today we're going to talk about short films and uh, on the platform, you can find three blocks of short uh, films. And so today main character is short films go green, but as I just want to briefly introduce you to uh, the two other blocks as well. So can I ask you Ray for another slide? So the first block is young Europeans take to the screen uh, and that project gathers seven European shorts uh, and those movies uh, present daily lives, aspiration and concerns of young Europeans uh, from their perspective. Uh, what's important uh, is uh, what's important is that those movies were made by young people's uh, people so um, it, it's uh, really about their problems and they those movies concerns about that problems as discrimination disability sexuality immigrations and you can find a lot of genres uh, among those movies uh, like fiction documentary animation so it's uh, it's pretty uh, diverse um, next slide, please. Thank you. The another project, uh, short film, uh, the short film program uh, is a carte blanche from the FIPADOC International Documentary Film Festival in Biarritz. And the festival proposes six short films from its new talent and short films uh, competitions, films made by students and emerging talents and from its educational program campus. And it's a huge variety of uh, those movies because you can find there is something really funny uh, and also something really intense because from one side, uh, on one side, you can see um, interview with an immigrant uh, who survived um, and from uh, and also you can find uh, very funny impression about first communion and this is really interesting and funny movie as well so the vari variety of those movies are really huge and you can always find something interesting for you and for your students and the third uh, block right can i ask you for another slide yeah it's uh, our a main character, so it's a short films go green. Uh, this is a program of seven short films which uses fiction, documentary and animation to explore the relationship between human beings and nature and their impact of uh, on each other. Um, next slide, please. Mm, okay. Because about that, my colleagues will tell you more. I just want to focus on what short movie is. So a short film is a short cinematographic work of less than 60 minutes in length. And because of uh, its technological and technical possibilities, it offered a variety of ways to make a movie. And it's, it's really uh, popular among young movie makers. Okay, can I ask for another slide? Um, uh, among those movies, you can also find several genres like documentary, fiction, animation, and combination of that too. 
as well. And the, um, the biggest advantage, advantage of that movies is that they are extremely prominent and filmmakers appreciate it usefulness in getting ideas. OK, and another slide, please. Uh, so those movies are really short and they're focused on single idea and the entire film revolves around that. Um, and those movies uh, tell a story in an extremely short space of time. So if you are a movie maker and you are producing a short movie, you need to remove all unnecessary things or unnecessary dialogues because you have to focus on the single idea and that it's the most important for you and that makes also those movies so popular. And another slide, please. Thank you. At the beginning, the short movies were uh, not so popular. It was only for amateurs. But uh, after some times, uh, we can see that short uh, movies are uh, often considered as an important step in the artistic journey of young directors. So that's the beginning. And they uh, make a movie using their cell phones, for example. And right now, those uh, uh, movies are um, treated very seriously. and. There are a lot of festivals, and the most famous one, it's probably uh, the festival in clermont ferrand And the last one, yeah. So advantages of short films are um, time efficient, attention span, creativity and innovation, diverse content, low budget, and trend of bite-sized content. So from my perspective, the most important is the the first thing is that you can uh, you can make this movie without preparation. Even if you have a cell phone or if you have uh, something to record, you can you can prepare a part of a movie or a whole movie. The second thing is that those short movies are um, directed to young people and their attention span is not uh, not long. So those movies has to be short and the trend of bite side content, it's pretty important because as, as we know, young people are just scrolling and browsing very fast. So those movies um, need to be short, but intense. And uh, I think that in that block of movies, important fact is that those movies were made by young people. So we can um, tell uh, our students that those movies were made by their peers. So that it can be also uh, um, inspiring for them as well. And I think that's it from my side. Thank you so much. And I'm going to pass the floor to Magda. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rafael, and thank you, Dmitra, uh, for this presentation. Uh, now I want to tell you a bit about this, it, this block of films, short films go green. Uh, as Rafael told you, uh, these are seven short films, and they use fiction, documentary, and animation. Uh, so different, they, they represent different genres. Uh, and they represent this relation between human beings and nature, uh, the impact of technology, and, uh, and uh, they uh, let us reflect on the present and future of the planet. Uh, all these films uh, are very recent. They were shot uh, from 2013 to 2019. Uh, the total runtime of this block of films is like 76 minutes. Uh, and each of them is from 4 to 20 minutes. And you can watch it um, in totality. But as uh, Anna Maria will tell you, uh, you can also explore with your students uh, each of films separately. Next slide, please. <laughs> I will try to tell you a bit, just very shortly, uh, about uh, each of these seven films uh, without telling everything, because it's worth watching. So the first one is Beach, uh, Plaza, uh, by Paweł Krawenski. It's an animation film, um, the shortest one, 
is this one that lasts uh, four minutes. Uh, and it's uh, an impression, a short animated impression of a summer day at the beach. Uh, and you can see the holiday makers uh, who, who come to, to relax. Uh, but, and we can see the nature, we can see these tourists uh, who have a rest, uh, surprisingly eating. So this consumption, which is the main subject, the main theme of this, uh, of this um, short film and production of, of waste is getting more and more um, invading. Uh, so very smooth, like this music, jazz music, uh, and a very uh, nice uh, picture is getting more and more uh, complicated, dark, uh, and not so uh, pleasant at the end. Next film. <laughs> Next film is a French one. It's a fiction, uh, Expire or Expire by Magali Magistri. Uh, and it's, um, uh, you can see this post apocalyptic and violent world uh, where there is no oxygen. Um, in order to go outside, you have to put your mask. You have to take your oxygen tank, uh, and the main prote the protagonist it's a fifteen year old uh, Juliet uh, who, as every teenager, wants to have fun, have party, to see her boyfriend. Uh, so to enjoy it, uh, she has to take her uh, her mask, put her oxygen tank. Uh, she has to face um, fifths uh, of, uh, of oxygen. Uh, the vision isn't, isn't very pleasant. And in this film, you can see, you can watch this combination of traditional and digital special effects uh, in order to, to create a very dystopian uh, setting full of mist and it's it's really uh, a bit mm, weird film. The next one, uh, documentary by a mm, British mm, or English uh, director Sasha Rainbow, Coffee and Lartney, um, and Coffee and Lartney are two teenagers who live in Ghana. Uh, in, in a town that is one of the most toxic places on the earth. Uh, we can see them and people from, from this um, uh, Abel Bloshi uh, who, who earn money and they are living from scrap metal collection in an op uh, air open dump, uh, what Dimitra um, told us about it. Uh, it's a very interesting documentary that focuses not only on this pollution, not only on this mm, terrible uh, condition of life, uh, but also the meaning of education and arts. I, I found it very, very important and interesting. And uh, the director uses combination of television footage uh, as media present uh, some places and some topics and the other footage uh, filmed by, by these two young protagonists using small cameras. And their point of view really differs from the one from the media. Mm, next film, next slide, please. So now another animation film, Find Us, uh, Polvere Sottile uh, by three uh, Italian um, directors, uh, and it's um, a short story, a poetic impression uh, about a woman, a young woman, uh, who who tries to survive in a sea of dust. 
and we can see her um, protect uh, a plant. We can see her uh, diving in um, in the sea uh, of uh, of uh, particulate pollution. And what is very interesting in this in this film as to expressive means uh, is that we can see these two environments: the world below, where everything is gray; it's almost invisible; it's it's covered by a layer of gray, and the world above, where you can see colors, little plants, and and it's still vivid. So there is some hope. Okay, and next one, please. Okay, one more, one more animation and documentary film, Makini, uh, by Tetsim and Frank Mukunde. It's uh, it's a film from Democratic Republic of Congo and Belgium, uh, and it's about once again about it's it's a very uh, important topic. Uh, of um, influence that mining and industry uh, has on Congolian towns. Uh, and we can see this pollution uh, and devastation uh, of, um, of the town of, of men um, from, from this town influenced by, by mining. Uh, a very, very interesting stop motion film where we can see, we can observe and appreciate the use of chalk drawing in, drawing, in drawings. And um, um, protagonists uh, are, are made of, uh, kind of made of stones and uh, repurposed materials. Uh, so this animation is, is really artistic. Uh, and uh, what's also important is there is this neutral voiceover explaining the economic interests uh, that lie behind mining. So it's a visual and um, visually very, very interesting and very good uh, documentary. Next one, please. Uh, everybody knows Greta Thunberg. Uh, here you can meet Giovanna, Giovanna uh, for Future, it's a documentary uh, about a Dutch teenager uh, who um, as Greta and many other uh, young um, activists uh, demonstrates uh, for the planet. Uh, and this documentary uh, shows us, uh, presents a portrait of, of this uh, young girl Mm, it's a very intimate and personal portrait. We can see there are there are many close-ups, uh, thanks to which we can mm, be very close to Giovanna uh, and uh, and her friends. Uh, and uh, in in this short, you can see also there are short videos in this short. Uh, videos made by other young activists who, who live in various uh, parts of the world. Uh, so we can we can hear several voices. We can we can meet several young person to whom the climate this um, uh, is a very very important topic. And the last one, I think. Yes, last but not least, it's a, a short film Hybrids um, by five uh, French um, young directions. It's an animation, uh, a sea thriller. You know, everybody knows uh, Joes by, by Steven Spielberg. And here we have a short version of it. And uh, you can see um, marine wildlife uh, that has to adapt to the pollution uh, and um, uh, the rules of survival change. So uh, these creatures who are half fish, half trash creatures, um, 
very dangerous, very scary. Uh, they, they want to survive in this ocean. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very impressive 3D uh, animation uh, where like in a really, really good thrillers, if you like thrillers, you have this fast and slower sequences that uh, increase suspense. Music is important as well. And it's a film that has received uh, numerous um, prizes, uh, accolades, selections, and awards uh, around the world. And I think that's all from me. So, Anna Maria, it's your turn now. Thank you very much. Yeah. So it's my turn to speak about uh, the classroom activities we can do with our students using this um, this kit. First of all, um, I must say that for me is one of the most familiar kits from the platform. Uh, and that is because in Romania we have uh, something called the Green Week. Starting two years ago, the, our Ministry of Education um, uh, wanted and succeeded to implement this uh, uh, Green Week, which consists in the fact that all kids, all teachers are entitled to do uh, activities uh, related to environment. Uh, so kids are very happy because they are not going to do um, classics uh, lessons. But we are also happy because we uh, it's a very flexible week and we can do a lot of activities, including uh, seeing green movies. So I will present you one activity from the kit. You uh, will find another three, uh, I think, in, uh, in the kit. This is the first one. Uh, it is about animation and environment. Actually, it is an activity you can do uh, during uh, two classes because it's a bit long, but it is a very um, nice activity and it is an activity that engage uh, various talents of, uh, of students. So basically, um, this activity consists in viewing um, some of the, the shorts. As Magda said, um, the total is like 76 minutes, uh, I think. So it's a bit, it, it could be a bit long for, for students as um, there are seven films. They, they have to concentrate to see the plot of each other. It, it might be difficult to, to see uh, the, the whole uh, uh, block with seven movies. So you can simply um, select the movies you want to, to see with your students. For this activity, you can select Plaza, Polvere Sotile, Hybrids and Machini. So basically the, the animations. Um, and uh, after uh, watching with the students those movies, you can talk a bit about the animation technique used, which are very good represented in, in the films. Um, you should explain a bit to, to students what uh, the concept of the storyboards means because um, the preparatory activity uh, will consist of sketching out the plot shot by shot, trying to do this. Well, it, it is not necessary to have talented students for, do the, for doing this because for them it's very engaging and amusing. Uh, even the, though they are not necessarily good at drawing. Uh, the, second, uh, the second session will consist uh, in the presentation for each group. So each group presents the result of their work. Um, and after that, the class reflects together on similarities and differences between uh, the animation films. Uh, you can also use uh, a tool from the platform, which is uh, the mind map. 
um, to in order to illustrate those similarities in terms of animation technique. And uh, also you can discuss, of course, not you can, but you will discuss probably about environmental uh, issues uh, and you can also summarize uh, those in a mind map. Let's go to the next slide. After that, um, this is the step three, actually not two. It's, a, it's a, a mistake from my part here in the presentation, but probably you understand that after the step two, uh, it follows the step three. You can split the, the class in groups of uh, three, four or more students and each group analyzes uh, one of the short films uh, by completing a questionnaire. Uh, probably you can't see very well um, what is written down here. I, I put uh, those um, images only to have an idea about the questionnaire, but you will find the template in the kit. You have only to download it and um, make some copies. Basically, you have um, ready-made material to work on. Um, the kids uh, will complete the, the questionnaire and after that uh, they can present uh, our, their answers. And as a final activity, uh, you can ask uh, to each student to make a drawing based on what uh, was discussed during the activity and give it a title. This is like, a, let's say, an additional activity. We can go to the next slide. So here I will present you very shortly because uh, um, I think it's already <laughs> late, but I want to show you a bit of uh, how I did some activities starting from this kit, not necessarily by implementing the classroom activities proposed in the kit, but um, let's say I had a source of inspiration in those activities. As I told you, in Romanian schools, um, one week per year, it's considered like the green week. And last year, this week was, uh, I think, during uh, April, if I if I remember well. Um, and I I. Um, uh, made an activity, I organized an activity with my uh, younger students, uh, seventh grade. Um, I had like, it, I, I took basically the um, students from, from that class, it was uh, like 30 students, and the activity was conceived for more or less 100 minutes so basically it would be like two normal lessons but they had also a pause um, a small break um, by 10 or 15 minutes it depends because as i told you it's not like a normal uh, day of school uh, what we did uh, my intention was to teach them uh, first what is a short and we had um, a small discussion at the beginning about what is a short film, because they are seventh grade and maybe they don't know exactly many things about uh, technical aspects of, uh, of a short film. And after that, we discussed a bit about what is a um, green movie and what does it mean green cinema. You can find uh, info about that in, in the kit. And, of course, I explained them a bit about uh, European Film Factory platform and uh, the project and how uh, they can, um, can use it as students. Because after that, I um, encouraged them to make uh, accounts and I uh, create a, a class group on the platform for them. We can go to the next slide. After this uh, uh, in introduction, let's say, we saw uh, three shorts and I choose uh, deliberately three different uh, shorts. I mean, we saw hybrid, which is an animation. We saw expire, which is uh, 
uh, more fictional uh, short and we we choose uh, Giovanna for Future which is um, kind of documentary so I had the opportunity to explain them that short films can be uh, one of all these uh, three types and I asked them um, that while we watching the the three shorts to pay attention to story characters environment colors sounds and film technique we had a short discussion about three movies it was a bit difficult to see uh, all of them one of uh, after another because the last one is a bit long and it's a documentary they were like um, um, not having so much passion, uh, uh, patience to, to see until the end, but we managed to see it. We trained also our patience. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And after we had uh, this short discussion about the, the three movies, we split in through groups. I put here um, the slides in Romanian because uh, I wanted to show you how I did it exactly. There, were, I, I suppose there is no use to translate the, the slides effectively, but I translated the, the three points, the three red questions. Basically, I split the, um, the group in three and each uh, group had to answer the same uh, questions, but by for a different movie. The orange group for Giovanna for Future, uh, the green group Expire and the pink group Hybrids. The colors were random. Um, the, and the, the aspects they had to analyze were what is the message of the film, uh, how the colors, the sound and the filming angles influence the way the message is um, transmitted. And at the end, uh, I encourage them to find and present a solution for the uh, environment problem presented in the film. And after that, we shared ideas. This uh, slide was uh, with funny faces or was for sharing ideas. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, the same activity, but a bit adapted. I did it for um, another uh, target group, let's say. This time we had a shorter time, 90 minutes, and we had like 60 or maybe more participants, which were different ages, students, and also some teachers. Because I replied to this uh, activity during a festival, which is called Bufi Festival, um, a festival for students, where students uh, create book trailers. And during the days of the, the festivals, uh, the festival, um, uh, they, uh, they can also attend a variety of activities, educational activities. And the organizers invited um, uh, uh, me to, to give a workshop and uh, together with the European Film Factory we had not only this workshop but some activities during this festival. So what we did, um, I did almost the, the same uh, activity but a bit adapted. Um, I started with a quiz about uh, shorts, I used Mentimeter or I don't remember exactly um, which uh, app. After that, we had the discussion about uh, shorts and then about green movies and what is a green movies uh, and so on. We can go to the next slide. And after that, I changed a bit because I had the experience with seeing Giovanna for Future as a third movie and I thought it's too long. I had too many students, like more than 60. So I changed and I uh, saw uh, um, instead of Giovanna, I saw Makini. And basically the, the process was more or less the same. We saw the movies, we had a small discussion and they received this time some cards with questions. We can go to the next slide. 
Um, and after that, um, at the end, we had a, a discussion. Each group presented uh, its work. And at the end, we had another uh, quiz related to uh, green cinema. So basically, uh, even though uh, the slides were only with images or were in Romanian, here you have the uh, the steps of the activity. And I can say you that it was very appreciated, the activity, and after that, some of them, uh, I know for sure that they went to the platform and searched for more movies. And that's all for my part. <laughs> I think uh, Irai, it's frozen <laughs> because I I, uh, I expected him to to take the the word. Irai, <clears throat> so maybe we can say thank you in his behalf. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, or I would say uh, more words and probably will thank you more than we, but it was a pleasure to have you. And Eugenia you, is also. I can wrap up. I, I oh. think I got frozen indeed. Sorry, apologies Sorry. for that. <laughs> no, I just want to thank uh, the three of you for presenting as well, Dimitra, that had another meeting. And to those of you who are still with us in the room, just a reminder that we have a master class on, on November with Daniel with David Garcia and a sewing uh, of um, of El Camino. So we are all very warmly invited to participate uh, on that master class coming up, as well as the future webinars that we have upcoming of uh, European Steel Factories and don't hesitate to follow us on social media to sign up for further webinars and thank you all for joining this afternoon and thank you of course to Rafael, Magda and Maria uh, thank you so much for being here it was a pleasure like always thank you thank you thank so you. much thank you. have a good afternoon. Have a nice evening